Where do you want to start here, Charles? Hey, Dan, how you doing? Hi, bud. Um, <laughs> I really don't know where to start. I don't know whether we should start with um, Germany, <laughs> whether we should go to the Naval Academy, or whether we should talk some of the uh, in-depth stuff. I'll let you decide. The team whose draft you love. I liked what Baltimore did in being able to stockpile and turn it into players that I think are going to help them. I think the fourth round is going to get a ton of attention, and rightly so, because they had all those picks stockpiled in the fourth round. I think that five picks there. I think each one of those guys can give them value. But there are guys, there's a guy that, that went in the fifth round, Matt Judon, an outside linebacker defensive end from Grand Valley State, that I think will eventually be a really nice player in the draft for them. And he'll uh, team with Kamale Correa to give them some pass rush, and they're going to need to start filling that in. Terrell Suggs will be back, but he's had two Achilles. You know, Elvis Dumerville, they don't want to play him full-time. He's more effective when he's a designated pass rusher. So they've got to find some people to fill in. I think they made a nice move towards doing that. What did you think of the Dallas Cowboys draft? I liked it because I've been a proponent of Ezekiel Elliott for a long time. I didn't do it in my last mock draft, but I've, I've talked about having that runner, and I know people keep talking about the position being devalued, and I just don't believe that. I think it's a position that's evolved. But if you've got a guy who can be a high-volume runner, but then you also have a guy who can protect your passer, which is why Tony Romo will want him on the field for three downs and can catch the ball in the backfield, that's what you're looking for. And it's not as simple as, okay, now you've got the right runner, you plug in, you immediately 12-4 and four again as they were with DeMarco Murray. They still have to keep Romo upright. They still have to be able to do other things, still have to get better on defense. But I like that. But I was puzzled, I have to admit, as much as I love the Jalen Smith story, mm. which is phenomenal, him getting drafted, I still kept saying, okay, where are the defensive ends that you don't have? You've got two guys who are suspended for the first four games of the year, and I'm just not one of those guys, Dan, that believes that, when, okay, so they're suspended for four games. When they come back, we'll be okay. They're suspended for a reason. You don't know how they're going to come back. You don't know that whether they're going to make it all the way through your year, if they're dependable. Who did they draft? Charles Tapper, a defensive end from Oklahoma, who's a good player, but I don't think he's a, a terrific force in, pa- in rushing the passer. And I didn't see anyone else. So I still have that same question. Who's going to be the defensive end pass rusher that you need in this league? And that's what Dallas still has to, still has to solve. More surprising that the uh, Big Ten quarterbacks were devalued or that you have uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers using a second-round pick on a uh, place kicker. <laughs> I think it was more, much more that the uh, Big Ten quarterbacks were devalued because the kicker had been rumored for a long time, and you actually had cover, and I'm using air quotes for that word, in taking a kicker now because we talk about the, the new PAT rule, and we saw where it dropped, what, about five percentage points from the previous years to last year in moving it to the 15-yard line. Mm-hmm. So now people are saying, okay, you better be dependable at the kicker position, even for extra points, because that can cost you games. So that made that more of a premium. And Aguayo was clearly the best one coming out this year. So I kind of expected that to happen, even though I'm still struggling with second round, but I get it. Quarterbacks. Well, (laughs) we all thought cook would come off the board as the fourth quarterback. And when he didn't, it went to, okay, why didn't he, you go back to what you'd heard before and all that he did to try and dispel the leadership, not being named captain, how people liked him or didn't like him. So the morning of day three, Dan, I talked to three different personnel guys, three different teams independently, and all of them told me that they had lousy interactions with him. So that's what it led me back to. Okay, this is why. Lousy. Oakland. Take Yeah, yeah. I mean, lousy was one word, and I'm using it as a consensus for the others. I won't use what, what one team said. So – uh-huh. That's what they that's what they were talking about. This is a big deal for him now to get this opportunity in Oakland and it really kind of mirrors Kirk Cousins coming out same school being drafted for Cousins in the exact same draft as Robert Griffin the 3rd in Washington. And everybody said, "Why would you why there?" Well, if he's better than your backups, you might want to go get him and Cook has that opportunity. Now it's up to him if indeed that's truly what the issue has been for him, clear that up and go play. Because I think that he is better talent-wise than the backups that are on the roster right now for Oakland, even though he'll be behind Derek Carr. Charles Davis, NFL Network analyst. You cover college football uh, a lot. And the Laramie Tunsil situation. Is this one of those watershed moments where 
kids with social media. I, I say that it still comes up. Social media is going to play a role in the draft probably from here on out. But how do you think this impacts next year's draft of what they have on their social media, if it's Facebook or Instagram or any of this nonsense? I hope it impacts it, Dan. I really do. But we have people who are talking till they're blue in the face to these kids already. I mean, let's just be frank about the whole thing. We can go to any one of these big time schools, off season and preseason practices. And I will guarantee you that for the last two to three years, minimum coaches have brought in people to talk to them about social media and what happens when you leave things on your phone and who you can trust and not trust. And no matter how close you think you are with your friends, you shouldn't do things that you can put on, on a video or have them walk out with pictures. I mean, we go on and on ad nauseum. They've already been doing that. When will people actually get the message and not do it? Because you and I both know every year we come up with stories. Now this one is the biggest one because it was the draft. This was a kid who may have been the number one player in the draft right on down the line. But you and, and, and your great team there could guarantee, I can guarantee it right now, you can pull it up and go, you know, kid, social media, bad move, and things will just jump off the screen at you from high schools. And I'll just start with that on up. I know people who are making a good living now being social media consultants, going from school to school, high schools, colleges, junior highs talking to schools and, and, and kids about what to do and what not to do on social media. So I'm with you. It's going to play and have an impact. But the idea that, you know, the message isn't out there and the word's not out there for kids, it's out there. It's just when are they going to choose to get it done and get it done properly? My, my kids' high school basketball coach this year told them, today's your last day on social media until our season is over. Anyone who's caught on, he told them what the rules were. And it, they were going to be severe right from the beginning. He got them all off of it. In high school, I kind of see it. In college, I think it's a little more problematic because they're older and they're going to have to deal with the real world at some point anyway. But all you can do is educate and hope that they listen and do it right. It's fun watch uh, with you guys with the NFL Draft. Charles, always great to catch up with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dan. You take care of yourself. All right. Charles Davis, NFL Network analyst. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 